Welcome, new and old friends. My name is 242, and tonight we finish what we started. It's the end of the mall Santa story. Is Santa about to die? What about the kid? Let's see what this spooky, scary Sunday has for us. So, turn off your lights, make sure your doors and windows are locked. It's about to get spooky. I used to work as a mall Santa, but one boy's Christmas list made me quit. Part 3, Finale By Windigo Roar Narrated by 242 With special guest, Silver Threads Okay, so let's get this straight right up front. I know I'm a moron. I get it. I knew Molly might be a Santa Slayer, but because she was a super hot maybe Santa Slayer, I gave it a pass. And I found myself throat to a giant metal pin with the repercussions of my decision-making paradigm. And really... That was really the only most recent of a string of bad decisions. But I was trying to save a kid, and I'm Santa, darn it. Well, I'm a mall Santa, but that's close enough. And I hadn't come totally unprepared. But that's getting ahead of things a bit. Molly had just told me she wanted to bathe in a fountain of Santa blood tonight, and I'd really rather she didn't. But with my hands cuffed together and her metal stick of stabbing at my throat, my options were limited, so I pulled out all the stops and really went for it. Hey no, Molly, let's not get too hasty here. She stepped back from me, just enough to punt me between the legs. And I went down, hard. Moaning on the ground, I cradled the pain as best as I could with the cuffed hands. Strip, Molly commanded from above me. I was too busy trying to puke up my own gonads, so I didn't move fast enough. No, she snarled and kicked me in the thigh. Why? I said. We need to complete the sacrifice, and the sacrifice demands the ceremony. Why do I have to be naked for the ceremony? Seriously, what the... I stopped mid-sentence, realizing. The drawing. I hadn't just seen a gruesome murder. I had seen the drawing of a ceremony. Molly was going to kill me, just like the kid's drawing. I didn't want to die, and I definitely didn't want to die as part of some ceremony. Quit stalling and strip, Molly demanded, preparing another kick. Whoa, hold on. I said. I'm going, I'm going. I stood up and grabbed my belt and started to unclip it. Molly, th this would be a lot easier if I didn't have these cuffs on. Molly took two steps back opened a drawer, and pulled out the biggest knife I have ever seen. Thing looked like a machete. It would be even harder with nine fingers, Molly said, taking a step closer. Wow, I never knew how easy it was to take my clothes off while wearing handcuffs. I said in my best attempt at a chipper, I want to be no trouble voice. Good, she said. I got the belt unclasped and I decided to fully remove it from the pants before undoing anything else, really dragging out the process. So, Molly, what's this all about? Why are you sacrificing Santas? I asked. I believe in something even more powerful. And he feasts on the flesh and souls of Santa, Molly said. Huh. I said. That's pretty terrifying. I got my pants unbuttoned and started to pull them down. You should be terrified, Molly said. But you're lucky. Your death means you'll be spared from having to suffer his rule over the world. 
I had forgotten to remove my boots. I was a little freaked out, and I thought I could remove the Santa pants over the Santa boots, but was I ever wrong? So now the whole lower leg situation was a total disaster of twisted pants wrapped around the black boots. Molly must have seen that everything was one giant nod of poor choices and figured it was because I was dumb, not because I was sneaky. She walked over and leaned down and lowered her knife. I'm going to try to cut your pants off. If you try and move or fight it, I'll just cut off your leg at the knee instead. Your choice. I liked my feet, so I let her slice off my pants. The knife went through the fabric like they were fuzzy red air, and Molly seemed to enjoy seeing how the sharp cutting of the blade May my eyes widen. Now get your boots off, she said, standing back up. Yeah, yeah. I said, reaching down to the left one. So, seriously, if this thing's rule is going to be so terrible, why are you trying to summon it? It doesn't sound like a good time for anybody, you included. Far from it, she said. The one who summons him becomes his lover, his partner in all the horror that is to come. I will have my every lust sated by a demon lord. So, Molly is crazy, and not in the maybe we can go on some dates and have some fun, but probably won't be settling down unless she kicks that coke habit way. She wanted to be a demon queen. Who even does that? I finished unlacing the right boot, took it off, and began on the left. I have to say, Molly, that's pretty fucked up. I said. Molly just <laughs> laughed. The left boot came off, and I stood up. I'm not taking my underwear off until the end. I told her. Fine. Just hurry up, she said. I got the big red jacket unbuttoned, but since I couldn't really get it off with my hands cuffed, I started unclasping the big Santa belly strapped to me. Where'd you stash the kid anyway? Is he another sacrifice to this demon lord? He's the final piece. A child must be a witness, so that his Christmas joy and belief in Santa can be fully destroyed. With your death, the final step will be to sacrifice and release all of his ruined joy to be the appetizer of the nights of terror to come. So I bet the kid was wherever this murder ceremony was going to be. Guess by the pictures he drew, I'm thinking it's probably one of the bedrooms. Remember when I said I hadn't come totally unprepared? Santa's belly wasn't all belly. I thought about hiding a kitchen knife or something in it, but that seemed like a good way to stab myself on accident. So I took a different route. I hollowed out the insides and shoved my weighted blanket into it. I know, it sounds weird, but a weighted blanket is great for my anxiety. It won't make noise or stab me, and it weighs about 20 pounds anymore, and the belly just won't stay on right anyways. So, when I unstrapped that bad boy, I swung it at Molly. By this point, she wasn't expecting much resistance from me. And with hands full of stabbing implements, she wasn't in a great way to try to ward off a blunt force attack. The belly clobbered her in the head and shoulders, and she was sent reeling, staggered by the unexpected concussive force. Before Molly could recover, I yanked the weighted blanket out from the hollowed belly shell and threw it over her. It came down draped over her, taking away her ability to see or slash at me effectively. I ran at her and gave her a shoulder tackle my high school football coach would have loved, and Molly slammed into the wall before crumpling onto the ground. Time to go. I whirled around, located the hallway, and ran down it, yelling for the kid. At each door, I ducked in, checking, but so far they all seemed normal. Bedroom, office, bathroom, closet. I turned a corner and saw flicker lights. Candles. Of course there were candles. Racing into the candlelit room, 
and I saw cuffs already attached to the bed frame, red symbols drawn on the wall, and a young boy chained to an end table, whimpering through a gag. I ran to him and yanked the gag out of his mouth. It's gonna be okay, buddy. We just gotta get you out of here, okay? He nodded and yanked his hands against the manacles, connecting his arms to the end table. Shit, shit, shit. I mumbled, looking shit, around for a shit, key or something. Shit, shit, no such shit. luck. The chains look solid, but maybe I could break them off of the end table. The wood had to be the weak point of this. I lifted the end table, which felt like it weighed a 70 pounds. Definitely not going to be able to carry this during an escape attempt. I smashed it on the ground as hard as I could. It cracked, but no significant damage yet. I smashed it again, trying to get the side attached to the manacles to hit first. Another smash, more cracking, but not loose yet. One more smash, and the tongues of the wood cracked and struck out, attached to the chains. I grabbed at it and heaved as hard as I could. Splinters dug into my fingers, and I felt beads of blood running down my fingers. But there was movement. Finally, with one final, all-out tug... I snapped it off. We could run for it. And that's exactly when the kid screamed. I turned to look at him and saw over him that Molly was running into the room, knife raised. I jumped forward and shoved the kid out of the way and grabbed at Molly's knife arm. She waggled it out of the way and the knife buried into my shoulder right as her sprinting body collided in mine and knocked me back. We fell backwards onto the bed, Molly ripping the knife out of my arm, which hurt even worse than when it went in. She raised the knife again, and I used my good arm to grab her wrist and swing her over. She sprawled in the bed, and the knife fell out of her hand. I was bleeding all over the place, and everything was getting slippery. My hand shot out at the same time as hers did. She was reaching for the knife, and she would have beat me to it but I was going for something much closer. I grabbed her wrist and in one motion slammed her hand into one of the cuffs already attached to the bed frame and clasped it closed. She was locked to the bed by her right arm. I jumped up and saw that red mist was coming from the floor. Definitely time to go. Molly screamed and hollered and I turned to look at her. She kicked out and connected with my stabbed shoulder. I hit the ground with a roar of pain, in agony like I never felt before. Crawling, I moved away from the bed, out of her reach. The red mist getting thicker. Kid, where the fuck are you? I hollered. I felt something grab my arm, and when I looked over, he was right there. Gotta roll, come on. I said. He grabbed the log of wood he was still attached to while I got to a wall and used it to help me get back up again. I grabbed him around the shoulder and we started staggering out when I heard an inhuman roar come from the bedroom. I turned back around and saw a creature with jagged horns, long claws, and serrated teeth climb straight out of the floor. The beast was wearing a shredded Santa suit. Realizing this was no longer Santa's line of work, I turned back around, pushed the kid along, and rounded the corner in the hallway. I have tasted the blood of a Santa. I heard a deep, crackling voice say from the bedroom. But there is no Santa sword here for me to collect. No, my lord, he has escaped. Give me more time and I'll bring him to you, Molly said, almost screaming. The kid and I ran down the hallway and entered the living room. You have brought me here and I will feed. I heard the demonic voice say again. No... Please! Please! I heard Molly say between sobs. I got to the front door and tried to open. Still locked. Throwing the deadbolt, I ripped open the door and pushed the kid out of the house. Krampus, Krampus must feed now. now! I heard the beast roar. And to the sound of piercing screams, tearing flesh, and crushing bones, the kid and I ran out of the house, jumping into my car and speeding away. Never. Looking back. It seems Crumpus will have to come back next year 
Hopefully Santa and that little boy never have to see what was under that bed again. If you like this video, then hit that like button and make sure it feels it. If you'd like to help this channel, well, the first way, subscribe and just watch some videos. Second is, go check out my merch, get yourself a mug. Lastly, I have a Patreon and there's some cool bonuses with it. All the links are in the description box. Now, come back this Freaky Friday for some day stories. Sleep tight, and I hope 42 doesn't bite.